On the 20th of November 1985, Microsoft released a graphical user interface, or GUI, for its text-based operating system MS-DOS, known as Windows 1. The idea for the name Windows came from Microsoft employee Roland Hansen, who explained, The common description of GUIs was windowing systems. In one name, we defined the category, and everybody else reinforced our name. The 1 in Windows 1 was simply a reference to the version number of the software, as was, and arguably still is, the most common way to differentiate iterations of a piece of software. In 1987, the next version of Windows, Windows 2, was released. This was followed in 1990 by Windows 3, which additionally received a famous .1 update in 1992, Windows 3.1. Whilst the initial reception to Windows had been mixed, starting with Windows 3 and in particular after the release of 3.1, the popularity of Windows increased massively, with developers jumping on board to create new apps for the platform and more users purchasing PCs or using them routinely through work running Windows. For Windows 3's successor then, Microsoft wanted to make a big impression, taking the feedback they had received from users of Windows 3 and 3.1 to improve the user experience in the next version. Brad Silverberg, who led the team working on what had become known in Microsoft at the time as Windows codename Chicago, recalled, Everybody assumed it would be called Windows 4. We wanted something a little more exciting because we felt the further we got into developing Windows 95, the more excited we got. I would say probably one of the most exciting moments I had during the development of the project was the day Joe Belfiore and Danny Oran, who were leading the user interface effort, pulled me over to their office to show me the prototype of the user interface that they had come up with. And when I saw the taskbar and the start button, I just about leaped out of my skin. I was so <laughs> excited. I was jumping up and down, uh, running around the hallways, hooping and hollering and like, it was, I knew as soon as I saw that, that that was the future of Windows awesome. user interface. And I knew this product was going to be a smash hit. Wow. You guys just absolutely killed it. This is, this is it. This is the future. We had that breakthrough in terms of ease of use and approachability. And so we knew we wanted to break with the past in terms of naming. We wanted to, uh, come up with something innovative that really stood for our future and uh, we decided to go with model years Windows 95 uh, we thought that would break the mold we thought right. it would be something that's a little bit controversial that people are going to talk about Chicago would ultimately release as Windows 95 named after its year of release on the 24th of August 1995 sporting a brand new user interface centered around the new start menu and taskbar, and a version number of 4. For the next few Windows releases after 95, except Windows NT4 in 1996, this same naming strategy would be used, up to and arguably including Windows Millennium Edition or Windows Me, which was named after the new millennium that began with the year 2000, and with a version number of 4.9. For the successor to Windows Me, Microsoft wanted to reinvent Windows again, similarly to what had been done previously with Windows 95. Windows codename Whistler, as it was known during development, would bring massive technical and visual changes to ordinary Windows users, coupled with increased security and reliability. Microsoft ultimately chose to name the system Windows XP, released in 2001 and with a version number of 5.1, with the XP moniker apparently standing for the word experience. This practice of naming Windows using a moniker would be repeated again for 2006's Windows Vista, version number 6.0, with Microsoft describing the choice of name as a wonderful intersection of what the product really does, what Windows stands for, and what resonates with customers and their needs. In 2008, Corporate Vice President of Windows Product Management at the time, Mike Nash, announced the name of the next version of Windows, which had been known during its development as Windows Codename 7. When Mike announced the name, Windows 7, 
It marked the first time a Windows codename had been retained as a final name. Mike explained, The decision to use the name Windows 7 is about simplicity. Over the years, we've taken different approaches to naming Windows. We've used version numbers like Windows 3.11, or dates like Windows 98, or aspirational monikers like Windows XP or Windows Vista. And since we do not ship new versions of Windows every year, using a date did not make sense. Likewise, coming up with an all-new aspirational name does not do justice to what we are trying to achieve, which is to stay firmly rooted in our aspirations for Windows Vista while evolving and refining the substantial investments in platform technology in Windows Vista into the next generation of Windows. Simply put, this is the seventh release of Windows, so therefore, Windows 7 just makes sense. Some people were quick to point out, however, that depending on how you count at least, Windows 7 is not necessarily the seventh version of Windows, and its version number of 6.1 not making things any clearer either. Following Windows 7, a similar naming process would be used for its successor, with Windows codename 8 releasing as Windows 8, version number 6.2, in 2012. The following year's Windows 8.1, version number 6.3, marked the first time Microsoft had used a point one in the name of a Windows release since Windows 3.1 over two decades earlier. After Windows 8.1's release, many expected the next version of Windows to be named Windows 9. This would have been the logical choice. However, on the 30th of September 2014, Terry Myerson, the executive vice president who oversaw the development of Windows at the time, announced the name as Windows 10. Whilst Terry didn't explain the decision behind the choice to skip Windows 9, two potential reasons quickly abounded online. Firstly, it may simply have been a marketing tactic to distance this new release of Windows from the lukewarm reception to Windows 8 and 8.1. Or alternatively, 9 may have been skipped owing to potential conflicts in the code of some apps which, upon checking the version number of the operating system to assess compatibility, may have confused the string Windows 9 with Windows 95 or Windows 98. Whilst given the version number 6.4 during its development, in time for release, Microsoft bumped the version number of Windows 10 to 10, finally realigning the name of the operating system with its version number, which last occurred with the release of Windows NT4 all the way back in 1996. In 2021, Microsoft continued this same naming strategy with the release of Windows 11, with version number 10. Wait, 10? Oh my god, I give up. <laughs>